Legend of the Dragoon, perhaps one of the best JRPGs that you've never heard of. Hello and welcome to the Criticuculus on the Monk, and today, yes, we are reviewing Legend of the Dragoon. Now, this game originally came out in 1999. It didn't hit Europe until 2001, however. Now, to put it into some kind of time frame, that means this game released at the same time as Final Fantasy VIII. In perhaps a period where Final Fantasy absolutely ruled JRPGs. This game was developed by Sony Interactive and thankfully is now available these days on the PlayStation 4 and 5. Obviously, this was originally made for the PlayStation 1, but you can pick it up for around $7.99. Personally, I was hugely thankful of this. I loved this game growing up and finding out that it had been ported over to the PlayStation 5. I was incredibly excited to buy it, try it and relive some of those old school memories. So what exactly is Legend of the Dragoon and what do you do when you play this game? Well, within this game, you follow Dar. He's the main protagonist within this game and you have to recruit a bunch of heroes basically to save the world. And within the game, you collect the various different heroes, encounter various different dragons that offer you their souls, or you find that you have the ability already unlocked within you, basically giving you the power over dragons themselves, giving you the power of dragons. So like with Final Fantasy, when you would summon a garden force, for instance, within this, you transform your own physical body. You get a nice set of armor, some wings, and of course, some fancy magic. Now, this follows the old school JRPGs. This is a turn-based uh, combat game in which you get a variety of different things that you can do. You've got your normal attack. Every normal attack pretty much has an extra kind of mini game with that called additions. You can do an additional amount of damage if you press the right button at the right time. You do an extra bit of damage. All of those... Um, attacks that you do can also level up unlocking more variants of attacks every single character has a variety of different attacks that they can un unlock and of course level up which is quite interesting as well as your normal attack you've also got a various amount of items you've got guard ability and of course when you learn how to become a dragoon you then have access to magic and special attacks too one thing I found most interesting about the combat side of the game is that the items that you you find, you find a ton of different items in the world. You've got shops where you can buy additional items as well. But your item space within this game is extremely limited, like hardcore limited. This game is actually very difficult. It's not anywhere near as easy as I found other games like Final Fantasy 7 and 8. This one you really have to think about what you do sometimes and make sure that you're fully prepared for battle. Now, it also relies quite heavily on the save crystal. So if you are a fan of Final Fantasy 7, Final Fantasy 8, you'll be very familiar with how this game plays out. And it plays really, really well. I mean, this game did have some quite heavy bugs on release, but I found my experience very, very smooth, no real issues whatsoever. And I found the story really interesting. Now, um, this is a story driven game. There is pretty much one story, one path, one thing you have to do. Um, there's very limited side quests in this whatsoever. So this is just literally a story that you're playing you're following dar on his journey to becoming a dragoon and saving the world and it's quite a funny love story that's kind of happening along the way as well which is interesting to kind of follow and this is all text-based there is some voice acting but it's extremely limited voice acting so there is going to be an awful lot of text you to either read through or kind of just button smash through either way Honestly, I thoroughly enjoyed my time within the game. Um, I love 
uh, turn-based combat games and this one just brought me straight into the old Final Fantasy uh, kind of style but Legend of the Dragoon does things a little bit differently you've got your your Dragoon force your magic you've also got a special attack while in that form too so it definitely offers its own variant of this game another layer to the combat that I didn't actually realize is that every kind of uh, person that you fight has their own element the element that they are kind of bound to and therefore if you match up those elements with with different attacks you can obviously do double damage and and half damage against your your own personal um characters as well it's nothing that the game actually physically tells you but if you play enough of the game um you do work it out rather quickly and i really like that because it just offered a little bit more depth to the game than i first realized and of course you do get a chance to level up these characters as well. The more bad guys that you defeat in combat, the more experience you get. So not only do you level up your own characters, but you also level up your, your moves and your Dragoon spirit as well. So I found that really interesting because the more you leveled up, obviously the stronger you got. And a little bit more strategy gets involved here too because when you're in the Dragoon form you can't actually just use your items so you have to be a little bit mindful of that because if you're stuck in a Dragoon for like three four turns and not being able to heal in this game can absolutely suck because like I said this is actually surprisingly difficult. For anyone that's never played this game but is a big fan of JRPGs, now there's a number of good JRPGs out there, but if you've never played Legend of the Dragoon, it's one that I would strongly recommend. It's around a 65-hour story, um, which is quite huge when you consider. And especially as it's only um, $7.99, it's great value for money. Now, on release, this actually sold over 1 million copies. Most of that was in America. Now, I can't see this game ever getting a sequel or a remaster, unfortunately. I feel like it's kind of done and dusted, but it is definitely one to, to look out for if you own a PlayStation 5. And a game that has a soft spot in my heart, one that I absolutely would recommend to, uh, to new players and old. And as I mentioned earlier, this game does actually have some voice acting. Now, it's not the best in the world, but it was a pleasant surprise. Spreading the flame to a blazing fire, the wind was Emperor Diaz. Seven incarnations of dragons served the Emperor. Their bravery inspired people to take up arms. Thus began the Dragon Campaign. It was a harsh war. Both people and Winglies suffered countless injuries and fatalities. After a long period of suffering, it was the humans who acquired the future. The age of humans had begun. And as I mentioned earlier, this game doesn't feature a huge amount of voice acting. Um, but it was nice to see. I think that it definitely adds to the story and the effect and just helps you just, just to turn off a minute and just enjoy um, what this game has to offer especially as it has so much dialogue i mean you have to go around town after town sometimes of course i would recommend talking to every single person in every single town most of it means absolutely nothing whatsoever um, but there's an awful lot of dialogue in this game so to have a little bit of voice acting sprinkled in was definitely nice Honestly, I have to give this game a solid 8 out of 10. It is a large game. It's one that I have thoroughly enjoyed diving back into. It's really cheap to pick up now. And I had pretty much no issues with it whatsoever. Now, this isn't the best looking game. It certainly isn't the easiest game um, to navigate around sometimes. Sometimes you know you've got to go through a door, but trying to figure out the puzzle in order to get through to it can be extremely clun clunky and frustrating. Um, but it is one that I have really enjoyed um, exploring once again.
And my biggest gripe out of all of them has to be the carry space. I just wish you could carry more than 32 items. Having, you know, such a restriction over the amount of, say, health potions you can carry just makes this game 10 times harder than perhaps it had to be. So I guess a little tip thrown in, if you're going to play this game and you finally unlock Rose, level her up as soon as possible because her healing ability in Dragoon form is so so needed but if you stuck along to the very end of this video a big thank you to you don't forget to comment red banana down below just confuse all those people new to the channel or they didn't watch to the very end and of course if you did play this game either before or recently since the uh, report onto PlayStation 5, let us know down in the comments what you think of this game. And of course, if this is one that you would recommend to other players. But until next time, I've been a monk who been a Chris at Ecos, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming. Yes! Uh, double flash!